Picture a still pond at dawn. The surface is green, completely green, blanketed by something so small you would miss it if you were not looking. Now picture that same pond 48 hours later. The green has doubled. Every single speck has become two. Another 48 hours. It doubles again. And again. And again. This is not algae. This is not pond scum. This is the fastest growing protein source on Earth. And the chemical fertilizer industry has spent 60 years making sure you never heard of it. In a laboratory at Ben Gurion University in 2018, researchers ran a clinical trial comparing three protein sources. Soft cheese, green peas, and a plant most participants had never seen before. They fed 36 men identical portions, 30 grams of protein each, then drew their blood every hour for three hours. The plant outperformed the cheese. Blood concentrations of essential amino acids spiked higher. Vitamin B12 levels increased more than either the cheese or the peas. The digestibility score hit 89%, rivaling animal protein. The plant they were testing weighs less than a grain of sand. It is called Wolfia globosa. In Thailand, they call it Kai Nam, which means eggs of the water. In the West, if anyone knows it at all, they call it duckweed. And it is about to make you question everything you thought you knew about feeding the world. Welcome to Nature's Lost Vault. Let's start with what this plant actually is. Wolfia globosa is the smallest flowering plant on Earth. Each individual measures less than a millimeter, smaller than the head of a pin. It has no roots, no leaves in the traditional sense. It is a microscopic green oval floating on still water. It reproduces every 29 to 48 hours by budding off daughter plants. Under optimal conditions, Wolfia contains up to 45% protein by dry weight. That is higher than soybeans at 36%, higher than quinoa at 14%, and higher than beef at 26%. But here is where it gets interesting. This is not an incomplete plant protein missing essential amino acids like most vegetables. According to Re, search published in Clinical Nutrition in 2018, Wolfia globosa contains all nine essential amino acids in quantities that meet World Health Organization recommendations. The protein quality score is 89 out of 100, putting it in the same category as eggs and milk. And that is not even the strangest part. In 2020, researchers at Ben Gurion University published something that should not be possible they found bioactive vitamin B12 in Wolfia globosa. Real vitamin B12, not the inactive analogues that show up in some algae. They confirmed it with liquid chromatography and mass spectrometry, the gold standard for detecting vitamin B12. Plants do not make vitamin B12. That is the rule. Only bacteria and archaea synthesize vitamin B12, which is why vegans have to supplement. But Wolfia globosa contains it anyway, approximately 2.5 micrograms per 100 grams of dried plant. Inside the plant tissue live bacterial endophytes. Wolfia has formed a natural symbiosis with bacteria that produce vitamin B12. When you eat the plant, you receive that B12. So let's review. This is a plant the size of a sand grain that doubles its biomass every two days contains more protein than soybeans, has a complete amino acid profile rivaling animal products, and produces vitamin B12 through bacterial symbiosis. NASA noticed. In 2021, researchers at the National Research Council of Italy began testing Wolfia globosa under simulated microgravity conditions for space agriculture applications. The results, published in scientific reports in 2024, confirmed what NASA had suspected. Wolfia globosa maintains protein production even under altered gravity conditions. 
According to their calculations, just 600 grams of fresh wolfia per day would meet an adult astronaut's complete daily protein requirements. Think about what that means. On a theoretical Mars mission, you could grow complete protein in water tanks using only light, water, and recycled waste nutrients. No soil, no massive grow chambers, no 90-day growth cycles. Just microscopic plants doubling every 48 hours, producing 45% protein, forever. This isn't science fiction. Wolfia globosa has been incorporated into NASA's bioregenerative life support system research specifically because of its unprecedented growth rate and protein density. But here is the question nobody is asking. If this plant is so perfect, why isn't it feeding Earth? The answer, as always, comes down to money. In 1909, German chemist Fritz Haber invented a process to synthesize ammonia from nitrogen and hydrogen. By 1913, his colleague Karl Bosch had scaled it to industrial production. The Haber-Bosch process could create nitrogen fertilizer from thin air. Prior to 1913, the world relied on natural nitrogen sources, manure, crop rotation, and nitrogen-fixing plants. Farmers understood that soil needed to rest, needed legumes, needed diversity. The Haber-Bosch process changed everything. Suddenly, you could dump synthetic nitrogen on monoculture fields forever. The soil could be dead, depleted, lifeless, and crops would still grow as long as you kept adding chemicals. By 1950, Synthetic fertilizer use had exploded worldwide. By 2000, humans were fixing more nitrogen synthetically than all natural terrestrial processes combined. The chemical fertilizer industry had become a $200 billion per year empire. And Wolfia globosa threatened all of it. Here is why. Wolfia does not need soil. It grows in water. It does not need fertilizer, at least not the synthetic kind. It absorbs nutrients directly from water, including nitrogen and phosphorus from sources the chemical industry would consider waste, agricultural runoff, wastewater, even polluted ponds. Studies have shown wolfia can remove up to 99% of nitrogen and 88% of phosphorus from contaminated water while simultaneously producing edible protein it turns pollution into food. But there is a deeper problem for them. Wolfia reproduces through simple cell division. You do not need seeds. You do not need to buy anything from a seed company every spring. You do not need patented genetics. You just need one microscopic plant and a bucket of water. And 48 hours later, you have two plants. Four days later, you have four. A week later, you have eight. The doubling time for the fastest Wolfia species, Wolfia microscopica, is just 29 hours, making it the fastest growing flowering plant ever documented. Starting with a single plant, under optimal conditions, the exponential growth curve is terrifying for anyone trying to control food production. One becomes two, two becomes four, four becomes eight. By day 30, you would have over a billion plants. By day 60, more than the number of stars in the Milky Way. This is not a plant you can control. This is not a plant you can patent. This is not a plant that requires annual purchases of seeds, fertilizers, pesticides, or proprietary growing systems. This is a plant that could be growing in buckets on rooftops in Lagos, in ponds in rural India, in water tanks, in refugee camps. Completely decentralized, completely outside the industrial agriculture system. And that is exactly why it had to be buried. The suppression was not direct. Nobody banned duckweed. Nobody passed laws against it. The chemical industry simply made sure that all the infrastructure, all the research funding, all the agricultural extension services, all the crop subsidy programs pointed in one direction, chemically dependent monoculture. When farmers asked about alternative protein sources, 
extension agents recommended soybeans, which need fertilizer. When governments funded agricultural re research, the money went to institutions with deep ties to chemical companies. When universities developed new crop varieties, they focused on plants that fit the existing industrial system. Duckweed did not fit. It never would. In Thailand, Laos and Myanmar, people have been eating Wolfia globosa for centuries. They call it kainam, water eggs. They harvest it from ponds, toss it into stir fries, and add it to soups. It is unremarkable. It is food. But in the West, duckweed remained pond scum in the public imagination. It was something that covered stagnant water. It was something you would never eat. The cultural conditioning was subtle but effective. Americans learned that protein comes from meat, dairy, or maybe soybeans. Never from pond water. Never from something that grows wild without human intervention. Never from something free. In the 1960s, NASA briefly experimented with Lemna duckweed for space missions, but they abandoned it because Lemna species produce oxalic acid, which can cause kidney stones. The research stopped. The public narrative became, NASA tried duckweed and it didn't work. Nobody mentioned that Wolfia species don't produce oxalic acid. Nobody mentioned that NASA had simply tested the wrong genus. Decades passed. Then, in 2018, an Israeli company called Hinoman began cultivating a strain of Wolfia globosa they branded as Mankai. They published peer-reviewed research showing the protein content, the amino acid profile, the B12 content. They ran clinical trials proving bioavailability. The science was undeniable. But getting duckweed into Western diets still meant battling 60 years of cultural conditioning and an entire agricultural system built around chemical dependence. Here is what they do not want you to understand. The chemical fertilizer industry does not make money when you grow protein in a bucket of pond water. Seed companies do not profit when plants reproduce for free. Agricultural conglomerates do not benefit when food production becomes truly decentralized. The entire industrialized food system is built on control, dependency, and recurring purchases. Wolfia globosa breaks every rule. It grows without soil, without seeds, without chemicals. It doubles every 48 hours. It produces complete protein with B12. It grows in wastewater, in polluted water, in water that would cost millions to treat chemically. This is a plant that could produce 100 tonnes of dry protein per hectare per year, 28 times faster than conventional crops, while simultaneously cleaning polluted water. And for 60 years, the people who control what gets grown, what gets funded, and what gets labelled as food made sure you never heard about it. But something is changing. In 2021, the European Food Safety Authority approved Wolfia globosa as a novel food. In 2024, scientific reports published research confirming its viability for space agriculture. Climate change is making traditional agriculture increasingly unstable, and suddenly people are looking for alternatives that do not require arable land or chemical inputs. The plant that was too perfect to be allowed is starting to break through anyway. You can buy Mankai online right now. You can order Wolfia globosa cultures from aquarium suppliers and grow your own in a bucket on your balcony. You can start with one plant and in 60 days, if you wanted, you could theoretically have more protein than you could eat in a lifetime. This is what they never wanted you to know. The most efficient protein source on Earth does not need them. It does not need their fertilizers. It does not need their seeds. It does not need their system. It just needs water and light. And it has been growing in ponds since before humans figured out agriculture. The question is, now that you know, what are you going to do about it? because every bucket of duckweed growing on a rooftop is a small act of rebellion against a system that profits from scarcity,
dependency and control. And this plant, this microscopic floating speck smaller than a grain of sand, might just be the most revolutionary crop you have never heard of. Until now. If this vault opened something for you, subscribe to Nature's Lost Vault and hit the bell. Every like and every share helps preserve the knowledge they tried to bury. Some plants are too small to notice, some protein is too fast to catch. And some solutions have been floating right in front of us the whole time. The next vault opens soon.